Hi everyone, welcome to talk to today's homeowner. I'm Chelsea, thank you so much for joining me. I have a fun project that I'm very proud of that I'm gonna walk you through today. Um, this Facebook Live is sponsored by QuickRete and I did use some of their products to complete my project. So if you need any questions about concrete, be sure to post them and we'll get back to you. And we'll also share some links to other concrete projects that might be a little lighter, a little more fun. Um, we have tons of projects on todayshomeowner.com and I even have a few at checkinginwithchelsea.com. So be sure to check those out below. And if you just have any general questions, be sure to post them as well. And you can make sure to hit the share button if you have a friend who is planning on pouring a slab, because that's what this video is about. I made a small slab um, for our garbage cans. We had a bare spot in our yard where we keep our garbage cans. Obviously you can't maintain grass there. Um, so I wanted a solid level surface for our garbage cans to sit on, just makes them look a little more sightly when we're driving driving up into the driveway. And so I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I did it um, and just share with you um, how easy it can be done and pretty quickly. So the first step is to mark out and figure out where you want your area to be. Um, I made ours 32 inches off of this existing wall. And then we have two garbage cans, one for yard stuff and one for house stuff. And so I just made it as wide as this wall as well. Um, and you can just simply use um, two by fours to create your forms. So you kind of clean out your area so that your two by fours can be level with each other. And you may want to consider um, how tall or shallow, if you will, how um, you want your garbage can pad to be. Um, we had the driveway nearby, so I wanted it to be level with that. Um, but if yours is standalone, then you might want it to be a little um, down, recessed into the ground so that it's level with your grass to make it easier to mow around it. Um, so you just want to figure out where you want it to be level with. Dig, um, remove some dirt if you need to. Then you're going to use just screws that are long enough to go through your two by four to make your form. So here, since I just had the two sides to do, I have um, the two two by fours and screws to attach them together. And then I used a level to make sure that it was going, it was just a little bit off level so the water flows away from the wall and away from the house. Um, and then attach it together. And then you need wooden stakes. You drive those into the ground on the outside of your form and attach that with screws as well to hold the two by fours in position. So I already have removed um, these stakes, but they were nice and tight um, when I poured the concrete. Now to pour concrete, or before we get to pouring concrete, sorry, I used QuickRete's all-purpose gravel as a uh, base layer within my area, and then I tamped it down really well. It doesn't necessarily have to be level, um, because you'll make sure your concrete on top is level, but it just gives your concrete a nice base so that it's not going to erode uh, over time with the ground around it. So you spread that out. Um, you need um, This is 32 inches by roughly six feet, so let's just say three by six, and I needed at least two bags of the gravel. Um, and then I used six bags of concrete. So um, six 80-pound bags, excuse me. Um, so I have the gravel in and I tamped it down really well and then I was ready to mix my concrete. I was able to mix, I used a, this, this wheelbarrow, pretty standard size, um, and put two bags in at a time, mixed up the water really well with a um, garden hoe and then I was able to pour it in. I used six bags like I said, so I put two bags in, mixed up another two bags, put it in, mixed up another two bags, put it in, then um, you go through and use a screed board, which can be just a regular, like I use scraps from my forms, a two by four, and you just kind of um, wiggle it around to get it nice and um, level with your form boards. That's why it's important that your form boards are level because you pour your concrete up to the same, uh, to the top so it's flush with your form boards. So then you use those to um, level your concrete slab as it's wet and, um, and you move any excess to where you might have low spots to make sure it's all even and smooth when you're done. 
Um, and another thing I wanted to point out, this is the concrete that I used from Quickrete. I used high strength concrete. You can do this same project with their fast setting concrete in the red bag, um, but it's been so hot here lately. I didn't want my first batch to set up before I got the rest of my concrete mix. So I used a slightly slower drying um, product so that I wouldn't have um, the slab separating from itself. So this is high strength concrete mix. Um, I used six bags of these, they're 80 pounds. I was so grateful. Um, I had two gentlemen help me at the store load up my stuff. One helped me load it onto the cart and then after I checked out, one helped me load it into my car. Now I can lift these by myself, but I appreciate um, when people take time out of their day to help other people, um, especially um, lifting heavy things. I'm not gonna say no to that kind of help. Um, but the bag does have a handy chart on it that tells you how many bags you're gonna need. So you can look it up in the store. Um, so mine was roughly nine square feet, so 10 square feet about four inches thick. Mine was about three and a half. Um, I needed six bags. So that's how many I bought. Had just enough. So make sure you um, use that little chart calculator. Um, I mean, it's obviously a better idea to do it before you go to the store so that you know how much you're buying and you're not trying to calculate at the store. Um, okay, so we have our concrete poured. We screeded it. And then, um, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes after I had it all level. I used just a push broom that I happen to have around to create a broom finish. That's um, a little something extra that you don't have to do for a garbage can pad, but they do that um, on patios and porches and stuff so that you have more of a non-slip surface. Okay, so now I'm ready to take the form boards off and I just wanted to show you that as it happened. Um, let me get my drill. Everything else is loosened up so I just have to do this real quick and I just use regular drywall screws since this isn't a permanent structure I didn't need coated exterior screws let me see oh I buried them pretty good that wet pressure treated wood the screws just sink right in there let's see maybe I can get it up without that I don't know if y'all have heard all the noise in the background, but my neighbors are having some trees taken down. We just call that sounds of progress. All right, let's see over here. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah! Now that is a slab. I'm pretty proud of this because I've seen this done and I've helped do it, but I did this slab all by myself and it turned out pretty spectacular. Look at that. Now I'll um, get some more sod and dress it out real nice, but for the time being, I'll throw down some pine straw because you can't have undressed garbage can pad, am I right? Let's just throw that down. And then I'll put the garbage cans on, garbage can. We'll be good to go. Okay, what are we thinking? Are we ready to make a garbage can pad at your house? Get the wheelbarrow out of the way. All right, there you have it. Our garbage can pad in five, six easy steps. Okay, be sure to post any questions below. Share this video with your friends and, and your neighbors so that your neighbors can have nice looking garbage can pads for you to check out. Um, and we'll be back soon with more live videos and other videos and lots of home improvement fun.